Welcome to a new test and teardown video. Today we're going to play with a Rode Swartz VHF monitoring receiver. And this fantastic receiver can cover um, from 85 to 300 megahertz in five bands. See, this is not the first band, I think. Yes, here is the first band. And then there's a really, really nice readout down here. See, if I turn this dial here. Isn't that just wonderful? And then it goes up here. See, all the different ranges. Can you hear? something that is rotating I really don't know what is going what is going on in here <laughs> but that is just fantastic this thing is a good solid half meter actually more than a half a meter wide it is humongously big and uh, yes, of course, it is tube based. We got um, 21 tubes in total. If you count uh, the three voltage regulators tubes, if you don't do that, you have 18 tubes in this unit. Uh, it's a dual conversion. So um, it's uh, first uh, IF is 21.4 megahertz, and then we go down to 3.4 megahertz. And uh, yes, uh, I think I already said it can do AM and FM. We've got different uh, width of IF. And uh, I got a few problems with this one. This one is really hard to move, but you also should be able to pull it. And that is not happening. This one is okay. This one moves. I think this is the mains on off. But there's also another on off here and that has something to do with the second oscillator that you can enable or disable i think this is maybe for conversion down to the if output you have here probably look at those beautiful little blankers there's a calibration here so i think if you yes and then you can probably dial this it's super super stiff and then there's this really really annoying um dc fix uh b is the size for this one yeah that was the bandwidth and mains entry is here on the front that is a classic tube kind of thing this one was uh recently thrown in a dumpster and that is why this little calibration key here is that defect. I think if I remove this top part, maybe it will be able to um, connect in here to that one, maybe, if I'm lucky. And also, maybe you see the missing handle. So that handle here broke off when they threw this in the dumpster. And there isn't really any other damage this handle here is okay. And I think that that is more or less it. Yeah, okay. There's a little nasty dent here and a little dent here, but that's kind of what there is to say about it. Then I will try and uh, open it and have a look inside for inspection before I try and power it up. Here we go on my scale. You can't even see the scale. And it says 30.6 kilos. Are you crazy? The empty cabinet is 6.7 kilos alone. Oh. Inside this absolutely massive 30.6 kilo unit. I now understand why it is so heavy. 
Look at that. Mains transformer is just amazingly big. Oh, and then there's another transformer here. Is that audio output? And that will be power supply. Of course, we got voltage reference tube. See, EC80, EC80. That will be double rectifier tubes. So all this is a power supply. And we got a mains entry filter down there. And really nice. Look at the glass. No expense spared loudspeaker mounting in little rubber it's just beautifully made really and we got quite a lot of tubes all over the place this long piece here at the back that's of course if got a lot of amplifier tubes along the signal path and down here they call this q2 i believe this is if oscillator and that tube is hidden in here because that if output and if on off calibration here is right there it goes into this unit i still haven't figured out what that thing here is doing you can push it and then you can turn it, but then can't do anything when it's out. So I guess you're not supposed to turn it. I think maybe something goes in here and push a little switch or something. So I want to have a... Oh, that was probably not so smart. So there's a little hole here. That one, that sticker was uh, probably hiding something. I was able to clean the switches. So now that will be audio and such. So now everything is moving real nice and smooth with a little bit of contact 61, the Wonder Fluid. So here from the rear, we can see it's a really nice big tuner here. And this is where stuff turns around. And I do hear some mechanical things. A lot of stuff is moving in here as well. So I bet we got some sticks and switches and stuff that's moving around. A nice little marking here with 134. And there's another transformer right there. So obviously you can see all that heavy metal. Not that kind of heavy metal, but just transformers. And... Uh, the fuse is, no, this is probably not the fuse. This is uh, just a shorting plug for selecting the different uh, voltages. We got uh, fuses on the front. Ooh, a babushka. And here we go. An ECC 81. So that is where they hide the oscillator tube. That is quite beautiful. Don't want anything to interfere with this double shielded and then see the two shields, they're not electrically connected. They added a little isolation tip here to make sure that they are not connected electrically. Oh, I pushed it too far. Oh, that's funny. So I removed oh. the little lid here okay. at the top of the tuner. And see, it was hiding a trimmer capacitor. So that is for some match of input or output this one goes to the if and here we got the antenna input and then there is of course some sort of a band pass or a low pass filter and then here is the injection from the uh, first oscillator and all this um, goes into this is the mixer and uh, tuner 
where everything here is matched in different uh, sections. Uh, when I turn the different bands, see if we can if we can get some light down there. You can definitely see a lot of stuff is turning around. And by the way, this is the mechanical. Let's see if I can get some. How impossible is that? Look. So I wind up a spring or something down there. See? And then it goes. That is a really funny... If you see, ah, oh yeah, here you can see, this is what I... There's a spring, and then, oops, and then it goes. Fantastic system! And that will be the calibration. See, I removed this metal, and now you can stick this in, and turn this. Not the most uh, beautiful solution, but yeah, I don't know, why is it like this? I feel we should try and power this up now and see if it works. This is the bottom view, and I found the mains on-off switch, and it is that one. See when I... Move this one, so there's a nice connection to the on-off switch, and then it leaves it, and then you got the AM FM, and then tick tock. Quite nice mechanical solution to save a switch on the front. It's like holes in the front cost money or taxes or something like that. It was always like this in the good old days. So this is uh, the bottom shield is now removed and here's the IF section look at that the shaft that goes to the IF bandwidth setting here at the front look how it is coupled some quarter sized spool gear and then it goes in here and it's pulling something in and out here. I really want to open the IF section and have a look. I think we should do that. You're going to love this. So this is, of course, the entire IF section. And again, remember what we were playing around with here. So when I'm changing IF bandwidth, see what's going on here. This was definitely from a time where relays, that was not a wanted solution. You could have added tiny little relays and then, but probably this will last lo a lot longer, I don't know. <laughs> and then there was another inner shield here that I lifted up. And this one also screw to this silvered Ooh, that can't be good this did somebody did something implode in here so that is what i'm going to look for maybe something was very warm or too warm this could explain why this one was thrown out well well i will have to inspect and by the way those two screws through these holes and then they fell down here somewhere so it's not going to be easy to figure that out again I am not done having a good time 
just enjoying the way that stuff is designed. So this is of course power entry and signal entry uh, with the connectors into the entire R IF section. And you can see this section here is full of filter inductors and then feed through capacitors. That's all these feed through to all the different rooms that's doing different things, right? Just enjoy how well everything is engineered. That will be a crystal oscillator. And it's just fantastic with all the feed throughs and capacitors. And it just goes again here. And this inductor is not just hanging loose or no, no. It's just made proper extra isolation and then a little mounting and then it's just look how well this is made the patience and the engineering got a few diodes there an oa265 and there's another one down there it's so dark down here i'm sorry about that yeah i really I really think this is beautiful. Of course, there's, there are no circuit boards and everything here was done by hand. And that will be a lot of hours spent. Look at that big capacitor. They just made it fit exactly where you had space. I also like the fact that some potentiometers for alignment and trimming of stuff they are accessible only from the back because we got transformers and stuff up here so you can't make holes or access and then you got some other you access from the top because then you just can't really mount it here it's not so good because of that one and they didn't want to have wires from this point all the way over here and mount some more and it's just I love it. Uh, okay, maybe I don't envy the guys that <laughs> are making these things. It's a little bit easier today with a circuit board. You just order and then easy peasy. Here you go. A thousand components in five minutes. But that's just how it is. Yeah. I'm having a big fight. With this switch, by the way, it is, well, at least it's moving. But I'm trying to flush in some cleaning here. But it's still, I need to more or less stand on it to make it move. So that's a little bit annoying. Those are filters, um, DC entry or low frequency entry. They consist of... Um, capacitors, inductors, capacitors, inductors, like that, and they're even labeled, so you can see how it's done. And the way that they are layered and connected to chassis, and uh, the way, yeah, it's just, they really, really work from DC to daylight, super, super w uh, wide range uh, filter, very, very good uh, design, and they, they're using these all over the place in uh, Rude Swartz uh, products because that was just a genius thing they came up with. So let's try and turn it on like that, right? And then we're gonna crank it up real slow and see if there's anything bad going on I see light and all good things so that is 220 and power consumption is only 70 watts and it is of course going up as everything warms up I'll turn off the light what else can we do here let me see. I need to play a little bit with volume. Is that? Oh, listen to that.
Hmm. What is that? It's not sounding exactly as I was. Hey! We got music! <laughs> it seems to be working! Here you go! What the heck? That's... And what is this? Wow, man! Oh, that's the width! It's definitely FM! Listen! It works! So we got ourselves... Oh! There's a nice, powerful audio here! And then that is of course the headphones. You switch between the... Yeah! Nice! I'm quite happy that it really works! <laughs> oh, yo, yo. And all those beautiful, beautiful tubes. We should probably dim the light here like that. So we can really see all this shiny. Well, it's only the power supply tubes we can see from here. There's a lot of power in that bulb for the scale. So, uh, yeah. Lucky, lucky us. Let's see. If I can show you this, can you see there's a little red marker here? See, this is the tuning. So there's a little problem with this switch here, by the way. But that is the indicator. So you ex um, activate the calibration, or you can just push it in and dial it, or turn it. Then it is activated, and then you see this. And then you take your little calibration tool, and then you can move... Let's get some. Yeah, now you can hear what's going on, right? See? See? And now it's. Now the signal is gone. And then you can get it back up. And then you dial it in for maximum. And then. Here we go. And then it's turned off. There's a little bit of a contact problem with that one, but. That is how it is, and we got this little red indicator here in each of the bands. And then you can tune around and hear all sorts of... You see, there's a little problem now, it's gone. I hear all sorts of funny, funny sounds <laughs> in all of the different bands. And here again, the red dot in this band, let's see. See, here we go. And then it is way too high. And then I should dial it down. And then it should be accurate, because I believe the injection here is generated by a crystal oscillator, right? And then it's just multiplied to add to exactly that point. Um, there's another little thing that I see here that it's not working and that is the tuning indicator when I find an uh, a, like a radio station and then I tune up and down here then I don't get any indication here so I will check if it is the meter or if there's a signal missing I also see this is quite blurry I don't know if it's visible on the video yes you can see it is probably quite dirty on the inside so I'll see if I can maybe I can take out the glass uh, by loosening these two um, screws and then I will see if I can get a nice clean picture that was a little bit annoying those two screws so I just take take out the entire instrument and then I will see if I can clean the glass how can it be that dirty um, it's just those two screws I guess no three this is a classic instrument from that um, time. 
remember um, this unit was designed back in 1956 to uh, 1965 so it is quite old the the way that you calibrate the readout by the way that is by a little magnetic short here so if you lose the loosen this screw you can move this piece of metal and this way make the magnet more or less powerful so the meter here is quite nice and all that works mechanically good but the glass is look at that you can't ha huh, you can't even see through it it is that dirty and it's not on the outside it is on the inside so that is really weird so now we can see through the glass that is amazing huh i'm sorry i have to um crank down the volume here because uh they're playing uh, <laughs> music and i don't want to have a copyright uh, strike but if you look at the signal intensity and the voltage here this is the tuning indicator the voltage there's a resistor and then it goes to the meter so see the voltage goes up and then it goes down and then signal is out and then signal is out so the thing is we do have exactly the right kind of drive signal, but there's no indication here whatsoever. So I think it is the meter that is defect. And they're not super easy to repair, but I will try and take it out and see if I can figure this it out. It's really a beautiful, tiny little instrument. It looks like it's okay mechanically, since the needle here is moving like that. And uh, there's another funny thing, 61. So now we know the age of this radio, 1961. I've been through my boxes of different uh, meters. I got some small ones and uh, the coil and the whole meter unit in this one is more or less the same as in this one. And I tried to look at the KM48 and the meter unit in this one is way too big. I got some other units like this one. It's not going to work. Well, I think if I take out that part here and if I remove this and then I somehow fix this in there and align it like that and I mean, I got nothing to lose because it's completely defect. And by the way, I wanted to show you the top and the bottom is, is exactly identical. But can you see the way that the spring is made like that? And the funny thing is the coil is hinged in the middle down to the magnet. And that is very, very rare. I don't even think I have seen this designed before in a little meter unit like this because all all meters as i know them they're hinged like this where you see there's a tiny little needle that goes from the coil up here to this point this is more or less how it was done there yeah during my entire lifetime, so to speak. <laughs> so, yeah, I've never seen anything like this design before. And the funny thing, I've tried to measure the connections all the way into the meter, and it does go via the two springs all the way to the, uh, to the coil, but it's just the coil itself that is open. So there's absolutely no way in this life, I will be able to fix it. There's only replace it. Just too bad. I don't know what I got myself into. So that's the original one that is completely broken. And uh, the reason why I took all this apart is because I need those little mechanical standoffs. I want to mount them here and I want to 
put these pieces of metal up here. This is holding that little piece of metal and I saved all these little parts. So I think with a little bit of luck, I kind of need Here's my Don't you think so? tricky plan. Now everything is removed and look at all the space that I made. And now I'll see if I can make the meter from this one fit down here and get up and running. That at least is my trick. This one fits of course perfectly fine in here. And so far so good. Right? Yeah, it took a few hours, but it was definitely a lot of fun. See? I think I got all the internal parts from the other meter in here. The only thing is that sensitivity is now about three times as um, low, so it's not a big problem. All I do is uh, change this 100k resistor because I measured the plus minus 2 volt on that side. So if I change the 100k to 22k, I will now get the needed deflection of this. Uh, <laughs> I mean, look at that. I think it works. I'm probably going to paint it black or something like the other one, right? I'm actually a little bit proud of this. But yeah, let's see if it works. So I think I'm done for today. I just want to show you the last little detail. And that is of course the meter installed. And um, originally we just had a 100k resistor from the signal to the positive. The red wire and this one that is ground. And that is also chassis. So what I've done is, I'll take a scaling resistor here, two diodes that's opposite way, and then another scaling resistor for a full scale and for the full voltage here. So all this together makes a um, protection against hammering the meter um, to both sides. This is probably a problem during power up and warm up of um, all the systems, and that's probably why the original meter broke. And here we go. Let's try and see how this meter works. Look at that. A little bit to the right, to the left. And it's even the right way. See, it is... You can see what I'm doing here, right? Let's try and crank up. Oh. See? So it works. And uh, I would like to say thank you very much for watching. I would appreciate if you give this video a big like. Because, I mean, I think I deserve it after this mega monum kind of achievement of today. Repairing this meter, I'm actually a little bit happy about how that went. So, uh... Yeah. Bye-bye.